me. Wrong costume. He was a rascally rabbit, a rule breaker. Hey! A rebel. And if there was a fourth wall, you could always count on Bugs to break it. Isn't that right, Bugs? Ain't it the truth? Funny situation, ain't it? Everybody out there's got rabbititis! Yes, indeed. Bugs Bunny made his mark. Before this long-eared rabbit, who among us would have even heard of Albuquerque? I knew I should have taken that left toy to Albuquerque. And who didn't wish they had an arsenal like Bugs? Of course, you know, this means war! Bugs didn't just have lines, he had trademarks. What's cooking, Jack? He don't know me very well, do he? Fight fire with fire, I always say. Gee, ain't I a stinker? Of course, every great comic needs his foil. And in a world of cutthroats, skin flints, and mean-spirited varmints, Bugs sure had his share of stooges. There was Elmer Fudd, a simple sportsman, hunting for the thrill, uh, uh, thrill of it. And Yosemite Sam, whose fiery temper always led to disaster. The ravenous Tasmanian devil, whose appetite longed for fricasseed rabbit. And of course, Marvin the Martian, who found this long-eared earthling so very, very irritating. Whoa! You can't do that. All the people I know are on the oit. <laughs> the noise of this character. For Bugs, it was all just a joust, a friendly bout in the ring. And what better way to diffuse the tension than with a kiss on the lips? But the most relentless adversary of them all was Daffy Duck. What a sting. What a cruel, cruel twist of fate for poor Daffy to have his thunder stolen time and again. All Daffy wanted was to be loved. Yahoo! And to be rich. Uncomfortably well off. Woohoo! Daffy Duck, star of the show. See? And playing second banana to Bugs Bunny wouldn't get him either. You stupid rabbit! Like this! There wasn't anything that Daffy could do that Bugs couldn't and wouldn't do better. Wabbit season! Duck season! Wabbit season! Wabbit season! Duck season! Fire! Of course, with Bugs' star so firmly planted in the firmament, it's no surprise that so many Hollywood hotshots angled for their own co-starring spot alongside the most famous rabbit in the world, whether dishing it out to Bogey. Say, pardon me, but... But could you help out a fellow American who's down on his luck? Here. <laughs> Dancing it up with Doris Day, or flying high alongside Flynn... Welcome to Sherwood. Bugs may have shared the screen, but he always stole the show. Nah, that's silly. It couldn't be him. Bugs had a lot of energy and a lot of drive to him. He was much like Cagney. Why do people like Cagney? He was a tough guy, and normally you wouldn't like him. But I think that's what made Bugs what he is, energy. Hey, what's up, Doc? Bugs was lavished with critical praise, adored by fans. It seemed the only thing he lacked was that all-important recognition of his peers. Oh, if only he could snag that elusive trophy. Oh, sure, the Academy nominated him for his breakout performance and even gave him a second nod a few years later. But still, that golden statue escaped him. That is, until 1959, when at last he finally became that Oscar-winning rabbit, Bugs Bunny. Oh, Oscar, I'll keep you and cherish you. I'll even take you to bed with me every night. Do you mean it? They say behind every great actor is a great director, and Bugs trusted only the very best to guide his performance. There was Tex Avery, who defied the laws of gravity. Yeah, who did that way? And the fiery Frizz Freeling, who conducted Bugs with a maestro's precision. 
and the long and lanky Chuck Jones, master of the number two pencil, who effortlessly gave Bugs such flair, such style, such panache. It's yours. And there were others, Bob Clampett, Bob McKimson, Frank Tashlin, each brought their A-game to a Bugs Bunny cartoon 